So the assistant editor, obviously I could not do what I do without an assistant editor. It's so very important and it's important to get the right person. And so now I'm gonna to talk to you about uh, my process for hiring an assistant editor. So, so what am I looking for in an assistant editor? Well, obviously I need someone uh, that knows what they're doing, right? As someone that is that has experience with Avid, in this case, um, that has had some uh, scripted TV or film experience. And can we get along? Because now we're gonna be working together for many hours and collaborating. And so we need to really get along. That's why in, in an interview, I like to know about the person. What are you into, right? What, what movies do you like? What music do you like? What, what food do you like to eat? Uh, what, you know, do you like to go hiking? Uh, who are you as a person? You know, one of the tips I give out to assistant editors is on your resume, aside from listing say credits and, 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 and your technical skills, is uh, maybe a section about other interests, hobbies, because that tells me on a piece of paper, before you even interview, who you are as a person, right? So that's very important to me. As far as uh, experience, well, it, it really, to me, is based on the project, right? Am I willing to give someone a shot that's a little bit more green? Absolutely. But it has to be uh, based on kind of the project that I'm working on. If, I'm, if I know I'm going to be working, for example, on a you know, VFX heavy show, it's going to be very intense. It's, gonna, it's just going to be a hard show. I already know that from, again, all the conversations that I've been having and reading the script, I know that. Well, you know what? Maybe I do need someone with a little bit more you know, experience. But if I can, if I know that this is, you know what, I will have probably a little time to, to kind of guide this person and, and, and give them an opportunity. And, you know, I really like them. They're really cool. Really, we're vibing, right? There's a connection there. I, I will definitely give them an opportunity if I see that, that the passion, the hunger for learning. That's the thing. For me, it's very important that this person is, just wants to learn, wants to soak everything in. And you can definitely tell that um, from an interview. What are their goals? What do they want to achieve? Where do they want to be in the next five years? Uh, do they want to be in the edit chair, right? Do they want to, or do they want to be, say, career assistant editors, which uh, is totally fine, but it's just a matter of understanding what this person's uh, goals are, right? And I get to know them, again, more as a person and we can understand each other, but I'm going to rely on this person to come in and if I, if I ask them, hey, what do you think of this scene? I want this person to give me honest feedback. I want someone that communicates. Communication is very important. Uh, that's why I say to people, you know, if, if, uh, if, if you are shy, I mean, definitely find a way to work on that, right? Because you need to be able to communicate what you are thinking, especially with, say, if an editor brings you in and they ask you, uh, what do you think of the scene? Uh, you know, you got to let them know. They're, really, they're relying on you, your, your second set of eyes to give you honest feedback. Uh, and also simply if you have ideas. I, look, I, there's so many times where I'm working with my assistant editor and they see something that I don't and they provide an idea. I say, you know what, have you tried this? Would you, well, you know what, let me try it. Oh, wow, that works better. Thank you, right? So I want someone that is, you know, not going to be shy and that is going to be really open to giving feedback and also communicating new ideas. Again, we, uh, we're, we are collaborating. This is a collaborative process. Something that's very important for me is organization, in this case, project organization. So that is something that I really require from my assistant editor. It's something that I bring up in an interview. I wanna know um, how organized they are and can they you know, keep the project tidy. Time management is also very important for me. Uh, I'm, I really try to make an effort to manage my time the best that I can because you know, I, for example, want to make sure I get through the day and I, and I can go back home and, and see my, my family, right? My girlfriend. And that I also, uh, again, like I mentioned earlier, is to keep up to camera that I don't fall behind. So, uh, you know, I also want my assistant editor to be aware of that, so like to be not getting so uh, stuck on one specific task. It's like, well, you have to move on. You have to keep up. You have to keep up, right? And so to be, hopefully this person is really aware about managing their time. That's, that's really, really important. Something that's very specific to Narcos Mexico is, is, is the, the language, right? I mean, it's a, it's a show that's in, it, it, a big part of it is in Spanish, right? And what does that mean? Well, subtitles. And as we are cutting, uh, we are doing the subtitles in Avid, 
right? Eventually, uh, you know, a, a company will handle those subtitles. But in the meantime, as we're editing and we're, we're creating cuts, we're, we're working with the director, the producer, with the studio, uh, we are creating our own subtitles. Now, I, I, I'm fluent in Spanish, right? But in this case, uh, the, my assistant editor, uh, Chris Cavanaugh, shout out to him, uh, you know, he doesn't speak Spanish. And uh, so when, when, I, when I hired him, uh, I knew this. But it, he was uh, so eager or so, uh, you know, hungry to learn Spanish that he even talked about, for example, buying these uh, headphones that would apparently translate the words as they were coming into your ears, right? So I saw that he was really hungry. He was willing to do whatever it took to understand as much as he could the Spanish language. And, and yes, he was able to help out a lot uh, with the subtitles um, because that's another thing about, say, you know, keeping up the camera and not falling behind is, are those subtitles. That's part of his tasks. So he has to keep up. He can't, you know, spend too much time doing those subtitles. Uh, but he showed that he was, you know, really uh, interested in learning uh, the, the, the language. And he really made a strong effort to do so and, and definitely helped me a lot uh, with doing subtitles. Thanks for tuning in. And don't forget to like and subscribe. If you want to see more of this style of content, join the Filmmakers Academy community today. And it starts at just $4.99. I'll see you in the platform.